We have him back. He's Akila Sherrill, executive director of the Community-Based Public Safety Collective. Good to see you, Akila. Good to see you, Steve. How's everything going? Everything's all right. Also, I want to make sure everyone knows, last time you saw us, Akila uh, was with us. He is, in fact, the board chair of the Newark Community Street Team. You'll see two different websites up, so you can find out more about the work that Akila and his colleagues are doing. Akila, tell us what the Community-Based Public Safety Collective is and why it's so important. The Community-Based Public Safety Collective um, is a national training and technical assistance provider to community violence intervention organizations nationally. Um, it's an outgrowth of the Newer Community Street Team. We launched it um, in 2020 um, so that we can preserve the integrity of the work. You know, many of the practitioners who do this work on the ground, uh, you know, Steve, um, it, it's, it's extremely difficult and challenging. And they don't always get the recognition that they deserve for leveraging their personal relationships in communities, you know, to reduce and, and prevent retaliatory violence. And so we wanted to really kind of put the work up and, um, you know, add professional standards and practices to the work um, and, and ensure that, uh, that um, residents who do this work are, are a real constituency in the conversation when it comes to public safety. Mm. Akil, you've been with us several times, but I've never asked you this. And I want to make sure people understand that that fighting crime for you, creating safer communities for you, is personal. You grew up in Watts, the Watts section of Los Angeles. You, uh, um, back in the day, if you will, brokered peace between the Bloods and the Crips in a, let's just say, a, a dispute that was very real. Mm -hmm. And you lost your son to gun violence in 2004. It's yes. very personal, obviously. Talk about it. Yes, sir. You know, 16 years of doing this work on the front line. You know, we organized the peace treaty in 92, changed the quality of life in our community. Um, you know, I had kids young, you know, growing up in the projects, um, you know, living, you know, seeing things and witnessing things that no child should ever be subject to. You know, I um, had kids early. Um, I, I raised four of my kids as a single father. My oldest son, Terrell, uh, went to college, uh, proudest day of my life, my man, um, Humboldt State University on scholarship, uh, checking him into all of his classes, meeting his, uh, his dorm mates. He came home um, for winter break and went to a party with, with some friends um, on the west side of LA, LA in an affluent, you know, black neighborhood and was shot to death at the party. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm no novice to violence, you know, I've witnessed it all my life, you know, but nothing ever prepares you for the loss of your child, man. So... It was um, it was traumatic, you know, to say the least. Um, and, you know, it uh, man, it, it, it made me ask like kind of really tough questions. As you can imagine, I'm pretty well respected in the neighborhood and in my community, there's a conditioned response to when like an OG like kind of loses his son for that matter. And that is to be violent yourself. Right, right. But, uh, you know, that wasn't Terrell's legacy. And we hadn't been working for 16 years at that point, you know, on the front line to end violence um, like it was a game, right? And so I had to explain to, like, his friends and my, and my friends that this eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth game that we've played had left us all blind and toothless. And that, you know, we was going to harness the etheric energy of Terrell and we were going to do something different with it. Um, and so... I always believe that, that, you know, we're not our worst experiences. I mean, in no way do I condone what the kid did in my, taking my son's life, but I do recognize that, uh, that every, every perpetrator is a victim. And, and somehow as a society, as a culture, we failed, you know, these young folks in terms of getting them the therapy and counseling and healing modalities that they need when they're growing up in these war zones to be able to, you know, to process the type of trauma that they've experienced so that they could show up like fully rooted in their humanity. First of all, thank you for sharing and giving of yourself because it's part of who you are and what you do. But, but a follow-up to that is something I've been thinking about a lot anticipation, in anticipation of this interview. So many people, whether in New York or Newark or other places, especially in New York, um, look at all these folks who are being let out, if you will, with mental health issues, and they're out on the streets, and then the judges are so lenient on them, they're back out on the street. Okay, being lenient, not the answer. Locking people up, not the answer by itself. Are there any successful initiatives that you want to share with folks about fighting violent crime? Absolutely. I mean, um... You know, safety is a shared strategy. 
you know, um, and, you know, I've had the fortune of being a part of several, um, you know, local and national strategies around reducing violence and crime. You know, one of the things, one of the ones that I'm most proud of is um, in California, we, we passed a bill, one of the most progressive pieces of criminal justice reform legislation in the history of the country called Prop 47. We took six low-level felonies and turned them into misdemeanors. Um, releasing something like, you know, like 5,000 people from jail. To date in California, over 300,000 people have had their records expunged because in California, you know, um, one felony has, you know, 7,400, um, you know, restrictions. And, and some of those restrictions were lifetime. Now, you know, many of these individuals who had perpetrated, you know, crimes, they weren't, they were, you know, mental health issues. They weren't, you know, they didn't need to be addressed by the criminal legal system. You know, we, we needed another um, approach, you know, to be able to support them in, in their respective healing journey. Um, you know, Newark, you know, New Jersey, you know, Mayor Baraka launched the, you know, the Newark Community Street Team, the Safer Newark Council, um, a body that pulled together law enforcement, health, um, community-based organizations, faith-based groups, to look at violence as a public health issue. And, you know, from that, from that strategy, um, the Newark Community Street Team was born. Um, you know, we've, we've now had seven consecutive years in a row of decreases of homicide and overall violence. Um, you know, NCST is one of the most successful community-based public safety initiatives or community violence intervention initiatives in the country. That, and, and that acronym stands for uh, Newark Community Street Team. Real quick, before I let you go, um, so lock them up, just put them away for a long time, I see you shaking your head. Go ahead. Final words. Hey, you know, um, uh, you know, locking folks up for the rest of their life is is not the solution. You know, it's um, you know, and public safety is just not the absence of violence and crime. You know, it's also the presence of well-being in the infrastructure to support victims and survivors in their respective healing journey. Hmm. Complex stuff. Akila Sherrills. Our longtime friend, we've had him on a whole range of programs talking about police minority relations, fighting crime. He's been out there with the Newark uh, Community Street Team and now executive director of the Community Based Public Safety Collective. Akila, we wish you all the best and thank you for the work you're doing every day. Thank you so much, Steve. You guys, stay with us. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, PSEG Foundation, Newark Board of Education, Seton Hall University, the Turrell Fund, supporting reimagined child care, the North Ward Center, University Hospital, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, and by PSENG. Promotional support provided by CIANJ and Commerce Magazine, and by NJ.com. This is the Seton Hall story, one that comes to life every day on our campus. This is the place where great minds discover, innovate, collaborate, and find their true calling. This is the place where passion has a purpose, where learning inspires leading. The bonds we make, the values we teach, inspire our community to take heart and take action. This is Seton Hall University. This is what great minds can do.